Welcome. Before I show you information on how alternators work, I want to show you a little bit about some great products we have. This right here is our dual rectifier alternator. This is based on a General Motors CS144 type alternator. This fits late model General Motors vehicles from anywhere from 1986 on up to 2008 it can fit. And what's particular about this product is this is a dual rectifier. And we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. The bridge rectifier is a component that converts AC current that an alternator generates into DC current with diodes. And on the inside there's fins in here. There's one bridge rectifier inside this alternator. And we have a second bridge rectifier mounted on the outside connected up in parallel. And thereby doubling the rectifier, doubling the durability. You go from having six diodes to 12 diodes. This alternator right here has a V-belt pulley on it. But we can do a variety of pulleys. We can do a double V if you need. We can do a, a wider V if you need. We can do a flat belt grooved belly if you need, belt if you need. We can put all types of different belts on here and pulleys and as well as different type mountings. Now this has a low type mounting for many General Motors vehicles. We also have the straight across mounting that we can do. So there's a variety of mountings that can be done as well on this. And the other product that I want to show you, we'll get this out of the way, and the other product I want to show you is our rectifier dual rectifier system. Now the one thing that you note on the dual rectifier is that it had that rectifier sticking out on the back. Not all situations will it fit where that rectifier can stick out of the back. There's some places it's just too tight and thereby come, here comes our, our quicktifier. This is a quicktifier 210 and what we've virtually done is we've taken that bridge rectifier, and I'll open this up, Just I left one screw, I'll just show you. What we've done is we've taken that bridge rectifier, we put it inside of this die cast aluminum box, it has a cooling fan in it, keeps it cool, and it's got holes in it to uh, let the air pass, and it has wires connected. And what we do with this, is this where you cannot fit the secondary rectifier on the outside of the alternator, and as well as this will fit many, many different imports, and things like that. What you do is you connect these wires into the alternator and this is an ignition wire and I'll show you a little bit on a GM alternator. This is the AD244 alternator which is common on many GM vehicles. This actually came off I believe a Suburban and what it has, it has uh, here are your AC lines that come up out of the alternator and what I would do, and we're going to show this later on, not in this video, but later on how we bring these leads down inside, we'll pop this cover off exposing that bridge rectifier, showing those AC leads, and then we'll bring these down in there and attach them to them. Once you attach, once you attach those leads, then what happens is power wants to follow the path of least resistance. So when your alternator generates the AC power, it will come out through these leads because this is a much more efficient bridge rectifier than the one inside the alternator. And you have your negative and positive. These would be just like the negative and positive coming off. You'd run these right to your battery, what will happen is the power will come out of your alternator, up into these lines, then you power your stereo and whatever else you need, and it takes the load off the rectifier inside the alternator, will make it last much longer. When we talk about rectifier, I want to show you some things. <coughs> what I've done is taken an alternator apart, and I put everything back together so you can see. Now how alternators work is you have your outside field, which is called the stator, and then you have your inside field, which is called the rotor. And what happens is, is your voltage regulator right here senses the state of charge your battery. It's always monitoring your battery when it needs power. What it does is the voltage regulator sends power into this brush holder. One brush is grounded, one brush gets controlled by the brush, the voltage regulator. And when there's demand for power, what it does is the voltage regulator turns on the center rotor. The outside is an electromagnet from your battery post. Your battery post comes right through here and it keeps this outer coil an electroactive electromagnet. The rotor is the center part is the part that turns on and off. Meaning that one of those brushes going to this side of the coil is grounded. The other has positive controlled through the voltage regulator. When the voltage regulator senses a need for power, it turns on when it when it turns on this electromagnetic coil, this electromagnetic coil, similar to you see at a scrap metal yard where they 